Yo, what's up guys? d -Cell Gaming here, back with another Final Gear. And today, I wanna focus on the end game. What's it look like? What are things that you need to be doing? What should you be focusing on? And how to make progress once you hit that initial level 60 wall. So, let's not delay any further and get right into it. Okay, so, you finally hit level 60, you started unlocking all of the regions um, on the daily list and you come across your large scale invasion and you're like, what the heck do I do now? So let's go ahead and jump in game real quick and let's talk about large scale invasions and what you should be doing because the in game is going to revolve around the large scale invasions and how you progress through them. So when you go into the battle, and you're going to go to the Delta region here and you're going to see that the first region is going to be the Delta large scale request. So when you go into the large scale request, you're going to go to a screen that looks very much like this. Let me go ahead, move my camera down a little bit here. All right. So you're going to go ahead and see that there's six stages and that you have five keys. You get five keys every week but you have six stages to complete. Now there are a couple ways that you can go about doing this. You can buy more keys or you can wait till the next week for the keys to reload. However, the stages will reset every week. So keep this in mind. What you're gonna wanna do, especially if you're a low spender or a free to play, is you're not gonna wanna use all of your keys up in one week. You wanna save two or three and then the next week you're gonna have, you know, seven or eight keys that you can then go and grind more currency. So that's how you're gonna to wanna to do it. That way you can get all of the stages cleared out at once and you'll be able to go into the second stage of the large scale invasion. It's very important that you make progress into the second stage of large scale invasion as quickly as possible, but we'll go over that in just a minute. So if you want to buy the keys, you can do that. If you click up here, you can use paid currency for the, the keys. I really don't suggest using paid currency for doing that, uh, whale or otherwise. The other way that you can go, uh, you can go into the uh, shop menu and then you can go to, um, where is it at? Gift packs. And in the weekly pack, the weekly pack will have some trial keys that you can buy for 300 of the free crystals. I don't actually suggest you really wasting your crystals on these keys unless you're really pushing or you know you kind of messed up and you need those keys to, to break into the next level or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I, I really don't suggest you know wasting crystals on the keys unless you absolutely have to so what do you need to be doing in these large-scale invasions well you're gonna want to go and you're you're gonna want to clear out as high as possible when you first unlock it you're probably not gonna have a high enough power level to clear out all six stages so it's fine go ahead and you know try to clear out as high as level as possible you're gonna have you know some stages like eye for an eye here where you have one-on-one -on -one battles so you're, you're gonna have to go through and just kind of figure you know what you can do out and once you kind of figure out that you're gonna be able to clear out the stage make sure that you have six keys and go ahead and clear everything out so what you're gonna really want to focus on in the large-scale invasions is the shop you're gonna want to build up your currency and the only thing you want to buy from these shops are the chip blueprints gold is tempting and so are the other blueprints. However, you really need to focus on chip blueprints. They're gonna be your biggest source of power increases and how you're gonna make your team one and your team two specifically stronger much faster. So don't get tempted by everything else in the shop. Focus only on chip blueprints. That's very important, guys. Basically, what you wanna do is you wanna try to break into the area two, the Kegya region, large scale invasion as quickly as possible because that's gonna let you get the chip one blueprints and it's gonna let you get better chips. So remember, the name of the game is to buy chips from the currency and large scale invasions. I know I'm repeating myself a lot here, but it's very important. I see a lot of people making this mistake. They buy other things in the shop and, and you're really setting your account progression back. Like a good chip can be like an extra seven to like 9,000 power jump for one of your characters. It's very, very important that you get these chips. As you can see, I've cleared out all of the stages for level uh, for the area two here. 
Um, once you get to the, the last level here in Black Wings, it's going to be Ada Assault for the area one. But once you, you know, you get everything cleared out, you can then go into challenge modes and challenge modes is where like the real end game is at because that's where you're going to be able to get extra titles because every time you clear a challenge mode stage, it increases the level and every certain levels that you clear, you'll, you're going to get new titles. So, you know, level one, like you'll see that I have the mystery lady and the rising star titles because I cleared level one of the ballistic showdown and black wings. However, once I get to level 20 in those, I'll get, you know, fire up and transcend it. So yeah, if you see somebody running around with the God of Kauai, you know that they're a madman and they've somehow already gotten level 50 on the one-on-one. -on -one. You can challenge an infinite amount of times or an, a near infinite amount of times. It doesn't cost trial keys and you can just keep going and going. This is really where you can test your, your unit strength out. And I really like this because it always gives you something to like challenge yourself with. It gives you some kind of cosmetic reward. It's really nice to have that cosmetic item that just shows, you know, you did something that hardly anybody else in the game has done. So that's really nice. And it's nice to have something to work towards. Now, the other thing that you can be getting from the large scale invasions, if you go to the, de um, the develop menu and you go down to custom mech here, this is where you're going to get the currency to get Evelyn and Coral's custom mech suit. So, all right. So you've started your journey on the large scale invasions and you hit that wall. You're like, ah, I can't go any further. What do I need to do? Well, once you've hit the end game, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is farm for dupes. Let's go over the different ways that you can farm for these duplicate sequences. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is actually in the pilot menu. So as you'll notice, all of my blues, all of my rares and my normal characters, they're all six star. And this is very important. The first thing that you're going to want to start focusing on is getting as many characters as you can, especially the blues and the greens to six star. Modify them all to six star because these are characters that we're not going to waste sequences on talenting up. But there is a very important thing that you can do with their sequences once they are six star. If you go down into your warehouse and you go to the materials menu, you're gonna see a button at the very bottom right here that says sequence, uh, redeem sequence core. So what this does is let you use sequences from characters that are already level six star and use those duplicates to buy sequence cores. So as you can see here, I actually have enough if I wanted to, to buy three of these sequence cores. I really like this system because it ensures that all of the duplicates that you're farming and you're getting from the summon system aren't wasted. They always have something. They always have a value and some use. So what can you do with these sequence cores is actually go into the shop menu and go into sequences and you can see it's a one to one conversion and you can literally buy duplicates of the characters that you need. So if you're working on Rin, you can get sequence cores um, for Rin. If you need Tasia, you can do it for Tasia. Snowy, once you've pulled a unit, they go into the sequence shop and you can buy up to 70 dupes. So it's very important that you get as many of your blues and greens to six star as fast as possible and start converting them to sequence cores. Another way that you can get sequences is to make sure that you don't forget about doing your events so when you go to an event like critical point for example you're you'll see that in the lottery pool you're going to be able to get stuff like this intermediate sequence chest this is right this right here is going to be 28 extra sequences for me that's that's uh 20 percent of the way to a sequence core right so as you can see this snowballs very quickly even though it's like small bits at a time every sequence core helps also it's important to clear out these events because you can get very important stuff like this uh ssr sequences you know it's very important that you don't forget about your events because this is a great way to get sequence cores another way that you can get some extra sequences is back to the pilot menu once you get a fondness level to 10 you can get a sequence core if they are an ssr so all of your SSR characters, if you farm them out to uh, Fondness level 10, you're gonna see that they actually provide you with a sequence core. And again, that's just a free duplicate from the shop. It's very important to note that SSR characters are the only ones that give 
sequence cores for being level 10. SR and below will only give you sequences for that character, but that again, that can still be very helpful in, in your grind for duplicates. Like for example, uh, my PN26 here needs five duplicates to be five star. But if we look at her fondness, she actually gives five sequences for level 10. So if I got her fondness to level 10, she would instantly be a five star. So keep this in mind when you're farming out for your sequences. If they're SR and below, if they're level 10 and fondness, you get extra sequences for free. And if they're SSR, you actually get a universal sequence core. And the last way to get your sequence cores is going to be from the request. You are gonna get a maximum of 12 sequence cores a month from your weekly clears. So when you go in and you do your um, recruits, every time you do five recruits, you'll get three of your sequence cores every week. So every week, three extra sequence cores. So this is what you're really gonna be focusing on in the end game. Try to get as many sequences, as many dupes as possible. There's so many different ways to get them. Just make sure that you're tapping into every possible avenue because the more things that you can bring up and level, the stronger your account's gonna be. Now, real quick, one of the things I wanna talk about that I neglected for a while, like I went a week without even realizing I hadn't done it, and it's actually important to do, is in your battle menu, you know, talking about making sure that you're clearing out events. Make sure that you go to your events tab and you're still clearing out the Shadow of Corboro. When you go into the Shadow of Corboro, even if you've gotten it completely filled out and you, you're down to the, you're only allowed to do it 10 times a day. I wasn't doing it because I didn't realize the benefit of doing 10 hard stages a day. If you clear out 10 hard stages a day, you're gonna get about 50,000 extra gold a day, as well as extra SR like mech parts that you're gonna need to augment your gear later on. So it's very important that you go in, you clear it out, it takes like five minutes. It's easy to forget, but that 50 gold, that 50 grand extra gold really helps. And more importantly, you can never have enough SR mech parts because you're gonna have to feed a lot of parts to get your SSR custom mech parts. The next thing that you need to focus on are your daily missions. So talking about the supply prep, on Monday through Friday, you're gonna wanna clear out the highest stage as possible. If that's hell, you clear hell. If that's hard, whatever. You wanna to try to get to where you can clear heroic and remember Monday through Friday, always clear heroic or the highest level possible because that's gonna give you the most currency available. Saturday and Sunday, it depends on what stage of the game that you're in. When you're starting out and you're just getting that progression in the end game and you're just breaking into the end game, Saturday and Sunday, you're gonna wanna clear easy. You wanna clear easy because easy is gonna give you a lot of extra of the green items that you need. You need a lot of the green augment items to break into your level one and your level two augments. So it's very important that you're focusing on easy on Saturday and Sunday. Heroic is what you're gonna wanna focus on way later in the game when you're trying to break a piece of gear from augment level five. Augment level five costs the red chips or the UR augment and they are insanely hard to get and it's gonna take you a really long time. So the faster that you can crank out some of the red UR augment items, the better. But I still suggest for newer players who are still trying to get their team one filled out, focus on easy on Saturday and Sunday. Conflict zone is another one. How should you do it? Well, conflict zone is pretty easy. You wanna focus on clearing out a highest stage as possible that you can 50% clear or higher, right? So you wanna do at least 50% more damage. Like if you're doing heroic and you're only doing like 0.5 or 1% damage, you're not really getting any currency. So you wanna focus on trying to get a lot of currency for those evolution items. So I still clear hard, sometimes I clear hell, it just depends. But most of the time when I go to assist challenge, I look for hard stages that are like full of health so I can do like 60, 70% damage on it and I get like 100 currency, you know. So you, wanna, you want to really, really try to focus on the um, percent damage part, not the difficulty part. 
it's it, it works in tandem but as long as you're doing about 50 percent damage you're going to get a lot of currency and that's really what you need combat training is also a little bit tricky you want to try to get to the depth level five and once you clear out a stage um all five stages of it you can actually sweep it so once you clear it once you don't have to do it again now what makes depth level five very important is it gives you a chance to get virtual implants those little octagonal shaped things and those are used in floors 9 and 10 of the talent levels and you're going to need a lot of them you're going to need a lot of those implants and you only get them from stages uh depth stages five and six don't worry about depth six for now because you need to full clear a stage in order to have a chance at those virtual implant items and depth six is really really hard and for most players it's going to be a long time before you can actually full clear it and if you like i said if you don't full clear it you don't get those implant items so focus on trying to get a full clear of depth level five and sweep it and you're going to be sweeping depth level five for a really long time but that's okay because you're gonna want those implant items you're going to want to start building them up as quickly as possible and you will eventually get to a point in time where you're going to be able to clear depth six but trust me guys it's gonna take a while another thing that you want to focus on once you're at that end game level and you've unlocked all of the things in the story missions you're gonna want to go in and focus on the personal stories so I'm talking about right here under the important tab. You can see the personal instance. You got um, taking out the trash, the first test, you know, Lee's, Vire, Elizabeth. These three right here, you're gonna wanna focus on. You want to get Lee's SMG because Lee's SMG is one of the best items to put on Solveig. And once you get that, you can focus on getting Vire and Elizabeth's custom mech. And what you're looking for is you want each of the pieces to have two substats. You don't really need to worry about trying to min-max the um, substats right away. The idea is to make sure you have two because you can modify them later and you can get the substats to be what you want at a later time. But it's very important that each one has two substats because that's gonna really help your character stats out. Once you've gotten those three things down, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna start clearing these out daily at the heroic level because the idea here is to get as many sr items as possible that you can turn around and use to feed into your other mechs to get their augment levels up the ones that i find the easiest to clear out is virates um, instance and uh esmeralda's instance you can put them both on heroic they're really easy to clear out they're very straightforward and you're going to get a lot of sr dupe items that you can use to augment and beyond that you're going to want to focus on your team one specifically you want to build them up as strong as possible so you're going to want to make sure that they're all level 60 you're going to want to make sure that their items are all at level 60. you want to start modifying and augmenting the equipment on your highest level dps make sure every one of them has purple chips they're all at level 60 as well that's what you're going to be working towards getting and also don't neglect your talent levels so when you go into uh your menu here and you you train them up your talent levels are very important so you're going to want to focus on one carry dps unit at a time and one support unit because you're probably not going to have the resources to level you know four characters at once so just kind of go down the row and once you get to level eight that's probably where you're going to want to stop with your talent because after level eight it's going to start costing those implants and the the resource cost for like each skill it, it's it's really really expensive the other reason that you want to kind of stop at level eight and probably start considering another character to start talenting up is because at level eight your talent passive increases yet again and you know that's probably where you're going to want to stop because it gets really expensive from there so your talent passive increases at level five eight and ten so from eight to ten cost a crazy amount of resources so once you get to there you're probably going to want to start thinking about maybe leveling up like your lee angle for example or another dps or you know whatever it is so that's kind of what you want to think about now if you want to go all the way to level 10 be my guest just keep in mind it's going to be really hard to do so and for now it's probably better to start focusing on somebody else so you can just have a stronger team overall. And one last thing to mention is don't neglect your skills. 
leveling up your skills is very, very important. Make sure that you're leveling them up because that can be the difference between, you know, 1100% uh, damage and 1800% damage. It, it can be a massive difference, but do keep in mind, not all skill levels are equal. And what I mean by that is if you look at my Lee angle here, you can see that I don't have her, her third passive, her fourth skill maxed out. And that is because at uh, level four, it's when Lee angles health drop drops below 70%. And at level five, it's 75%. So there's not a massive difference here. I can come back and level this later. Those three textbooks it costs isn't really worth that 5%. It's better for me to take those three textbooks and put it into another DPS and get like four of their skill or three of their skills to level four, for example, because it only costs one textbook to go from three to four, but it costs three to go from four to five. So make sure you're paying attention to what the skills are actually doing. And is it gonna be worth it to put it into that skill or another skill? It does not cost textbooks to get to level three. So all of your skills should be level three minimum on your team one and team two. And then from there, really start to focus on building up level four and five in your skills because it makes a massive difference in your account power. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video here as I don't want it to drag out too long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it or at least found the tips helpful in some kind of way. If you made it this far in the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more future videos like this one. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything said in the video or about the game in general, let me know in the comments down below and I would be more than happy to help you guys out. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.